development uh, always, you know, the, these meetings that we have, et cetera, and you know, um, always tends to focus on the on the child, on the infant, or even pre prenatally, research focuses on that. And where I want to start with you, of course, because you're the world's expert in this, is um, is the is the parent and the parent brain, mm -hmm. in particular, because um, it's becoming more and more recognized how important that is. So so maybe you can um, uh, talk about um, the sort of the sensitive period for the. Parental brain, even before, before uh, birth, before, during right. during pregnancy, and then afterwards. Right, right, and I think this is one of the most amazing, at least for me, uh, discoveries in uh, in adult neuroscience, especially when neurogenesis came into into work in animal models, and then. So uh, by our neur neurogenesis, you mean in adults there are there still are some areas still of the brain that are producing brain cells. Brains, right, yeah. and there is still. Um, um, there is still plasticity in the adult brain throughout life, and you'd be surprised to know that the period surrounding birth, just before and a few months after childbirth, is the most plastic period in the adult brain. So actually, childbirth really gives us an opportunity for plasticity, an opportunity for change that after the brain has matured, we no longer have otherwise. Mother's brain is, uh, develops throughout pregnancy through uh, the hormones of pregnancy, particularly prolactin and oxytocin. Oxytocin is especially important for human mothers. Father brain... Uh, and so so um, oxytocin, I've heard, you know, I, it's, it's involved in, people think of it as a hormone important in social behavior. So what's going on in terms of the mom and the mom's brain and and oxytocin, what's uh, during, during pregnancy? So during because the baby's not born yet, right? Right, so during pregnancy, there is uh, increase in maternal oxytocin, particularly in the MPOA, which is a special area in the hypothalamus where oxytocin is produced. And this uh, area is sensitized and produces a lot of oxytocin to prepare mother to meet her child oh, because oxytocin doesn't only bind you to the child, but it makes you focus. Oxytocin increases social salience, so the infant becomes the most salient thing in the mother's world, whether she's pregnant and then certainly after, after birth. And then that area in the hypothalamus that's primed by a lot of oxytocin project to two other areas in the brain, which makes a a network. One is the amygdala that make mothers worry and vigilant about the infant. What's going on with the infant? Is the infant safe? Is the infant breathing? Is the infant sleeping? Is, you know, we're always totally preoccupied with the infant's well-being. Without that, the infant will not survive. And the other one is the dopamine subcortical area, especially the VTA. And that makes uh, infant stimuli particularly rewarding and enjoyable to mothers. So dopamine is known to a lot of people as the reward neurotransmitter, exactly. the reward hormone. So that also that is being... Also, and this integration of oxytocin and dopamine is critical because it increases reward, but it directs it to the infant. So it's no longer reward from other things like sex or food or anything else, no, but it's, it's reward, it's targeted completely to yeah. the infant. And that integration of oxytocin and dopamine deep in the brain, in the striatum, makes mother's brain prepared for bondage. It gets more interesting because the parental brain, what happens during the sensitive period of the few months prenatally and the few months postnatally, this sensitive period where the parental brain organizes, coheres, and is plastic is not just something that happens in the parent's brain. You know, this nice lights that you see on pictures of the parental brain. It has implications for children development. So we have studies that follow the brains of primary caregiving fathers and primary caregiving mothers, and we follow their children for the first six years of life. And we see that functionality of the parental brain, whether you are a mother 
or a father, but how your brain, your parental brain organizes during that sensitive period is really important for the kind of emotion regulation strategies your child will acquire when they go to school. Thank you.